All right, we're on page 58. We're putting all this together. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. 58, we haven't started one of these yet. You guys, in order to find out any of this stuffs, let's go factor it. Toot or oh toot the top? Oh, yeah, neither. Thank you. What about toot or oh toot the bottom? Thanks. All right. What multiplies to be three adds to be four? Three and one. Three and one. Okay. Do we have a hole? We don't have a hole because we don't have a common factor on the top and bottom. You feel me? Agreed. What's up? So, but I just wanted to review it since we hadn't talked about the hole yesterday. Okay, you guys, does anyone remember what makes the vertical asymptote? This is what we started with. Vertical asymptote is when the, oh gosh, any? Yeah, the bottom equals zero. The denominator equals zero. Whichever wording helps you, write it. When is this denominator going to equal zero? Three and Careful. Negative, negative three. three and I love it. Negative three and negative one. I'm going to go put that in my picture. Who remembers from yesterday? Horizontal asymptotes. Yes, the bottom degree is bigger. Anytime the bottom degree is bigger, the horizontal asymptote is zero every time. Good memory. Do you have to remember that? Yes. We're going to say that horizontal asymptote is at zero and it's in my picture. You guys, how do we find those x-intercepts? When your y is zero. Mateo, thank you, bubba. It's when my y is zero. Here was my equation when we factored it. Could I have written it any smaller? I don't think so. I'm going to blow it up for you. Okay, here's my equation. <laughs> I just want to make sure you can see it back there, Tay Tay. If my y is zero, what do I actually care about? I only really care about the top, right? Because aren't I going to do zero multiplied by that denominator? So I would just have my x minus two is zero. It's really just the top. What do we got? X is two. So that means my x-intercept is two when my y was zero. Beck and Blake, you all right? Yep. Okay. What about my y-intercept? Is when my x is zero. Mr. anybody. Zero minus two on top. Negative two. Zero plus three. Three times zero plus one. Three times one? Three. So what do I have as my... Yeah, negative two-thirds. Let's go put both of those on my graph. Two zero. Push. Zero negative two-thirds. Push. I'm here, Sean. So you guys, I've got that little blueprint staring at me. I'm gonna go to my nice little Desmos. I'll even do it for you because you know I love you guys so much. We got x minus two on the top. We got that divided by x squared plus a four x and then plus a three. Does this look like uh, it can fit our blueprint? Yes. Don't you think? I agree, Mateo. We got something just hanging out in here. We got this little guy that's going to cross through and cross through. And then we're going to hug. And then we got that little guy. So I feel good about it. We're going to just, uh, we're going to say got to cross through every y-intercept and x-intercept. I don't really care where your little loopty swoopty is laying in there. And then this one's just going to hug those asymptotes as well. Okay, we're jumping to page 59. You ready, living since Sanders is this? First thing first, you guys, we're always going to go factor them. What is this function factoring into on the top? Page 59, bud. Nothing on the top. Agreed, Harville. On the bottom. Difference of squares. What are we left with? X plus 2X minus 2. Do we have a hole? Yes. Where? What X coordinate is that hole going to be at? You're saying at negative 2. I agree. Before we go any further, rewrite re what is left, which is 1 over x minus 2. This dictates everything now. This dictates it all. Every single answer is going to be based on this. Get rid of the hole. Now this is going to base everything. You guys, if my x is negative 2 for the hole, where would be the y value? He's saying, all right, if my x is negative 2, 
negative 2 minus 2 would get me a negative 4 on the bottom. So the whole is going to be at negative 1 fourth. Eh? We haven't done that in a while. So you guys, let's just go put that on our graph. Negative 2, negative a fourth. Negative 2, negative a fourth. I'm just going to be like this. Ugh. Kind of, ish, sure. Now, where do we want to start? You want to go with those vertical asymptotes? Looking at this, where is my vertical asymptote two. going to be? It's when the denominator is zero, so it's going to be at? Two. Two. When x is two, make sure that you write it as x equals two, not just two, because that lets me know we got a vertical asymptote at x is two. What about that horizontal asymptote? It's it's going to be zero. Yeah. Why is it going to be zero? The, the exponent on the bottom is a one. We don't even have a variable on the top, right? So because we've got a bigger exponent on the bottom, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Uh, Coop, it's when the exponent on the top is bigger that we wouldn't have a horizontal asymptote. Sound good, bud? So I'm going to go put that in my picture. X-intercept. Again, guys, everything is based off of this. This is weird. For an x-intercept, what are we putting in for y? Either zero yeah, I'm putting in zero in for y. I'm putting zero in right here. You guys, what was the shortcut that we did before? We don't have to worry about the bottom because when we do, it just cancels out. Does zero ever equal one? No. Zero does not equal one. Is there an x-intercept? No. Nope. Because we just got 0 equal 1. That's not a true statement. How about a y-intercept? When my x is 0, I'm going to go plug in a 0 right here. If we put a 0 right here, we got 1 over negative 2. Wouldn't that be negative 1 half? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought I heard something different. When x is 0, we got negative 1 half. Eh? Can I put that on my picture? Sure. Zero, negative one half. Looks good. We're going to go hug this vertical asymptote through my y-intercept, jump over the hole, stay underneath that horizontal asymptote. Then I'm just going to put that guy in. Here we go. Can we factor the top? Yes. yes. I can. Are they both perfect squares? Yes. Yeah. What's the, what's the top going to factor into? X plus 1, X minus 1. What about the bottom? X minus 1, X minus 1. If I toot that, what multiplies to be 1 adds to be negative 2. What multiplies to be 1 adds to be negative 2? Negative 1 and negative 1. Very good. Do we have a hole? Yeah. At what x coordinate do I have a hole? One. 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 Something. Right? This is why I chose this one. This is so funky. What do, do you agree what I have left is x plus 1 over x minus 1 when I got rid of the hole? That's what's dictating all of it. Nah, sir. Nah, sir. When I put a 1 back in here, Sean, this is kind of what we were doing the last time. Oh, when I put a 1 there. I was looking at that other one. Oh, got you. What would I get? Zero. Two, over zero. 2 over 0. Can I ever divide by 0? No. No, so this would be kind of undefined. And so actually what happened to our hole? It yeah. doesn't even exist. There actually is none. That's why I wanted to do that one. Anytime you get an undefined value, guys, it just doesn't exist. And we're going to figure out why. Why don't we have a hole there? You guys, let's go right here. Totes, we have to. Great call, Ritz. Well, they don't have a hole because it's where they're the vertical asymptote. Exactly. You guys, a vertical asymptote is when the denominator is zero. When's my denominator going to be zero? One. At one, right? And therefore, I can't have a hole. I can never cross a vertical asymptote. So my vertical asymptote is when x is one. That's why the hole got overridden, if you will. We got a vertical asymptote. Very, vertical asymptotes are very powerful. Okay, thoughts on a horizontal asymptote. I got 1x squared over 1x squared or 1x over 1x. What cancels out? It's just going to equal 1. Agreed? <clears throat> Did 
Doesn't matter which form you look at, they'll, it'll always be the same. My x-intercept, you guys, it's when my y is zero or really just when my numerator is zero. Yeah, well done, Mateo. When does the numerator equal zero? That's at negative one. So I'd say negative one, zero is my x-intercept. My y-intercept is when the x is zero. I'm gonna go right here for that. If my x is zero, I'd have one over negative one. Yeah, awesome. If my x was zero, I got a negative one for my y. So I'm gonna go put that on my graph. Based on my calculator, it looks like we're hugging, we're going through those intercepts, we're hugging that one, and then we're just here.